The Danner 950 and 1200 are the most widely used pumps in DIY cold plunge. And in this video, I'll show you how to set up, troubleshoot, and repair these pumps if something goes wrong. I'm Joe with DIY Cold Plunge. Let's take a look at the Danner 950 and 1200. So out of the box, you're obviously going to have your pump. If you order a Danner 1200, you're gonna have this piece of vibration foam. This can stick to the bottom of the pump to help reduce any noise or vibration there. You'll have information on your product warranty. And both the Danner 950 and 1200 come standard with three quarter inch female threads on the in port and three quarter inch male threads on the out port. It also comes with a 10 foot cord with a three pronged US plug. So the pumps are plug and play. They are extremely well well built and durable. The only flaw that they have is that the pump face can get damaged. But if you stick around, I'll show you how to fix it. These pumps can be used both inline or submersed, so they're perfect for getting into the game incrementally if you don't want to do a bunch of plumbing right off the bat. These pumps come with a warranty. Danner's great with customer support. And of course, I'm always here as your first contact when it comes to cold plunge specific setup when you order through DIYcoldplunge.com. And this is a complete side note, but some of my favorite memories are sharing this business with my kids. These pumps are delivered to my house on a pallet. My innovative twin boys went to work to help me move these pumps to the basement. And I absolutely love that I get to teach them about life, hard work, business, and customer service through this channel. So thank you for the support and for the memories. Enough of me gushing about that. Let's get to materials and setup. At the very least, you'll need a three quarter inch male threaded to socket fitting and a three quarter inch female threaded to socket fitting. I've got a tutorial up showing exactly how to connect these. So check that out if you need to. It's also linked below. I do recommend implementing both unions and ball valves into your plumbing design in addition to these fittings. You can obviously make your own decisions and configure this however you want. And no matter what, once you have these primary fittings attached, you can configure the rest of your plumbing with PVC fittings and flexible spa hose. If you subscribe to the channel or follow, you'll hear me talk about priming your pump. And all that means is that you have water flowing freely from your tank into your pump without any air or other blockages obstructing the flow. In short, these pumps are excellent at pushing water, but they can't pull water. And it is absolutely critical that you don't run these pumps when they're dry or not properly primed. And remember, if the pump is plugged in, it's on. So just leave your pump unplugged until you're sure you're ready to turn your system on. If you hear a noise like this, immediately unplug the pump so you don't damage it. And there are a number of situations where your pump can lose prime. The most common is any obstruction preventing water from reaching the pump. This is mainly caused by pre-filters, and if you watch my previous video, you'll understand why I'm not a fan. It can also happen if your shorts or swimming trunks clog the outlet hole on your tank. So having well thought out hole placement on your cold plunge is important. I've got a video on that coming up, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. The pump can also lose prime if you have backflow pressure from your filter housing. A simple filter change will fix this, but if you use my recommended filters and keep up on regular maintenance, you shouldn't have any issues at all. Last and probably most confusing is if you just drained and refilled your tub. What happens here is air gets trapped similar to if you put your finger over the top of a straw and dunk it into water. Water doesn't enter the straw until you release your finger from the top. And all you need to do to prime your pump here is disconnect the in port on your chiller. That'll release the air, you can reattach it and start your system. Let's move on to troubleshooting and FAQ. First and most common is which pump should you get? I get a ton of folks that reach out saying I have this size tub or that size tub, which pump do you recommend? And the reality is that pump size doesn't have much to do with your tub unless you get in like the 200 or 300 gallon range. It's more about the size of chiller that you pair it with. In general, the Danner 950 should be paired with one quarter horsepower chillers and the 1200 with half horsepower chillers. And know that where you order from matters. It hasn't been many, but I've had a few people reach out before ordering because they bought a pump on Amazon, but it arrived damaged. I take a lot of pride and customer service and want to make sure that you as the customer succeed. Part of that is putting out all this content for free in hopes that I provide enough value to you to consider doing business with me. And the other part of that is execution. I'm gonna make sure that you get the parts you need and that they're in working order. I got a really nice review from a gal named Barb a while back and I've got a bunch more on my site that you can check out if you want. What if the pump breaks? Like I mentioned earlier, the faceplate on these pumps are basically the only part that isn't bulletproof. And you just wanna make sure that when you attach your fittings, just hand tighten them. You don't need to use a wrench or anything like that. And if you do, you can over tighten, snap, or damage the faceplate. Damage can also happen if you bump into the faceplate after everything's installed. This is much more common if you use hard PVC, which is why I recommend using spa hose. But it can also happen if you're simply moving your cold plunge around. So be cautious when you do that. And if your pump happens to break, here's how to fix it. You can get a replacement part on Amazon. It comes with the faceplate and a rubber gasket in case that part was damaged as well. All you need to do to replace it is take a Phillips screwdriver, 
and unscrew the faceplate from the pump. Once you have all the screws loosened, gently wiggle and take off the faceplate. Most times your pump impeller is going to come with it. Here you'll need to grab onto this and gently pull it out just like that. Once you have this removed, you can slide it back into place. And this is all magnetic, so it will pull this part into its place. Next, inspect the rubber ring to make sure it's not kinked or damaged. If it is, take your replacement and swap it out. Once you've done that, take the replacement faceplate, gently press it into place, and then reattach using those same screws. Then, once you've done that, your pump is as good as new. So overall, if you're looking for a pump for your cold plunge, I think Danner's a great choice. They've been making pumps for over 90 years. They're located in Long Island. Island. They offer customer service with real people and each pump comes with a warranty. If this video was helpful and you want to support the channel, hit the subscribe button below or check out DIYcoldplunge.com. I truly appreciate your business and the lessons and memories that you're providing for my family. As always, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you at the next video.